good to be back. I was excited when they said that we were going to be doing this again because it was successful last year. It was fun, and I'm um, glad to see we have a big turnout again this year. Whoa, back up. I'm going to be talking about investing in yourself. Um, we invest in a lot of things in our lives. We invest in the stock market. We invest in our houses, our cars. We invest time into our family, time and energy into work. But are we investing into ourselves? And if not, why not? If, uh, the, the way that I phrase it to a lot of my patients in the office is, are you putting on your own oxygen mask before you put on the person's next to you? And if you're not, you're kind of useless. Okay, quick caution. Uh, what I'm about to talk about is going to result in more energy, heightened focus, improved mood, less pain, and generally feeling well. If these don't interest you, be a good time to take a restroom break, get another beer, and uh, come back when Ludlow's talking about sex. <laughs> Which will get it better with these things too. All right, so our first topic is going to be food. Um, why eat better? We always talk about it, especially after the holidays, which are a little bit past at this point. It's like, ah, I just blew it. Got to start eating better. Got to start eating better. Um, but what's, like, what's the point? There's a lot of delicious stuff that is terrible for you. Could just keep eating that if we wanted to. Um, but if we don't put the right fuel in our tank, we generally feel lousy, and it results in chronic diseases. And that's been proven time and time again. When I'm talking to my athletes in the office, I say, uh, if you owned a Ferrari, would you go to the corner gas station and get the cheapest gas you could get? No, you'd put the highest, best quality gas you could in that thing because it's a high performance machine and you want it to perform that way. And if you want to perform that way, then put good fuel in your own tank. My three pillars of nutrition are a little bit stolen from an author, but this is my take on it. It's eat real food, not too much, and lots of plants. And quickly on that, um, Real food is the stuff around the perimeter of your grocery store. It's not in the middle, usually not in a can or a box, pre-made or whatever. Um, sometimes it's frozen, but if it's at your farmer's market or around the edge of your grocery store, you're probably doing okay. Not too much. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, maybe self-explanatory, but I've got a little bit more on that. Um, and then, or actually I'm going to talk about that right now. The lots of plants we'll get back to you in a second. The not too much, there was a really interesting study that came out of Australia um, just in the past month or so. They took a couple of groups of uh, people and they just had them live in a lab for a month, which is an awesome nutrition study because they were providing everything and totally controlling it all. For the first two weeks, the group either ate real food, unprocessed stuff, or processed junk food. And then they did it for two weeks and then the group swapped. They were given more calories than they needed and they said, eat until you feel like you're full and finish when you're done. On average, no matter which, if they did it the first two weeks or the second two weeks, the group that was given the junk food, the unprocessed deliciousness, was they were eating on average 500 calories a day more than the group who ate real food. And that is not to say that there's like weird addictive chemicals in the, these foods that are like, conspiring against us from Russia or China or something. But um, it's to say that these foods are engineered to um, strike our pleasure centers in our brain. And gosh dang it, that Dorito is like perfectly designed to be crunchy and delicious. It I don't think it has anything real in it, but it is perfect. And like Oreos, all this stuff. I mean, let's admit it's delicious, but if we know that, and we know that it is designed to make us overconsume to buy more of their product, then we can counteract that by knowing, one, don't buy the darn thing, or two, just have like one. Lots of plants. Nine out of 10 of us are not getting enough plants in our diet. Nine out of 10 Americans are not getting enough fruits and vegetables. We should be getting two to three cups of vegetables and one to two cups of fruit per day. That was and, not or, just in case you missed that. Um, <laughs> The, the Mediterranean diet is a good rule of thumb that continues to come back in the research as being the most heart healthy form of eating. And um, look, look that up, there's guidelines on it, but in general it's high amounts of produce, fruits and vegetables, seeds, nuts, beans, those kinds of things. Um, lower levels of saturated fat like from uh, red meat, more chicken and fish, and um, uh, olive oil as a main cooking oil and no Oreos, maybe one. Um, 
And then a, another good rule of thumb to follow is eating less is going to trump exercising more, especially when it comes to purely weight loss. Um, it's easier to not eat 100 calories than to try and burn that off on the back end. The old adage that you cannot outwork a bad diet rings true. Activity is my next pillar of health. My uh, comment last year that movement of movement as medicine is still a good thing that I want you guys to think about. Um, you know, like Dr. Myers was saying, we spend umpteen dollars a year on medications. Uh, could we be investing in ourselves in a better way by moving and not taking uh, our blood pressure medicine because our blood pressure is now controlled because of our lifestyle? What is a panacea? It's kind of like a cure-all. And lots of people will tout their supplement or their product as a panacea, but exercise is one of the only true panaceas out there that literally everything gets better when you are exercising. The recommendations that you'll see out there are 150 minutes of moderate activity or 75 minutes of vigorous activity per week. That's based on um, goals of reducing chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and things like that. Um, when those standards are adhered to, the chances of developing those diseases is significantly lower. And a reminder again that every little bit counts. Um, as much as I would love to carve out 30 to 60 minutes a day, it is not always possible. And so, um, you know, if you can bust out a 10 minute walk on your lunch hour, if you do that every single day, you're close to an hour for the whole week. So little things like that add up. It doesn't have to all come at once. Um, another thing that's really, really good when you're strapped on time is something called a HIIT workout, H-I-I-T. It stands for High Intensity Interval Training. It's kind of like an exercise hack. When I don't have time for a big workout, I know that I can bust my butt for seven to 10 minutes and get something substantial that is actually worthwhile. Um, Tina Vandaguchi is awesome about HIIT workouts. She's gonna be in the back after this um, and there's numerous resources online that you can Google. A common question I get and something I counsel my patients on is uh, cardio versus strength. A lot of us tend to trend toward one or the other and um, you know, I got my runners that all they do is run, I got my lifters that all they do is lift and they never cross paths. But we really should have both. Uh, show of hands, who in here is over the age of 30? Few of us. Keep, keep your hands up if you are doing some kind of lifting, resistance training or strength training at least one day a week. Okay, awesome. Those of you who put your hands down, your muscle mass is going this way and your fat mass is going this way, unless you start to offset it with strength training. And one day a week is a, you know, a good minimum to hit for doing that. It doesn't have to be every single day in the gym, but at least one day a week getting some kind of resistance training is gonna make huge benefits for you. As far as a challenge for you all, and using your man plan like Matt talked about is gonna be awesome as far as applying these things that we're talking about. Um, for those of you who are not moving, how can you move more? Where can you fit in a little bit here, a little bit there, so that it adds up to a lot? Or where can you carve in a sizable chunk of time to get a, a nice workout in? And then for those of you who are exercising, how can you move better? Do you need to uh, increase the variety of your workouts? Do you need to add in some strength, add in some cardio, um, or you know, talk to a personal trainer through our uh, organization to help you with that? But those are some challenges I wanna ask you guys to think about. Lastly, we've eaten well, we've worked hard, now we need to recover. If we're not recovering with sleep, we're really selling ourselves short and um, our gains are gonna be minimized. That good nutrition that you worked on, that hard workout you did, if you're not recovering with sleep, you're losing out. Sleep is where our muscles get repaired um, at the end of the day. That's where we start banking short-term memory into long-term memory, so you're getting smarter, stronger, and healthier when you're actually getting good sleep. Unfortunately, our country has historically not prioritized sleep. We've prioritized production and achievement and doing more and sleeping less and you can sleep when you're dead. Well, that, that mentality leads to an earlier death. So yeah, sure you can do that. And at least it's a great recipe for burnout. So if you're for those things, don't sleep and just keep busting your butt. But if you wanna feel good and kinda in the, in the same vein as exercise, where it literally helps almost every aspect of your life, getting a good night's sleep is huge. Um, seven, to ten, or seven to eight hours is a good rule of thumb um, in general, but not everybody needs eight, and, but not everybody can uh, get by with seven. So 
Um, this is really important. And if you struggle with this, you're not alone. This is something that I struggle to prioritize in my own life. I'm still trying to figure out how to get to bed on time and not find 18 more things to do when it's nine o'clock and then I end up sleeping or going to bed too late, waking up early, drinking too much coffee and doing the same thing over again. So I'm gonna get there eventually and you are too. My last question about this, is this your first domino? And what I mean by that is we can get into just like we can get into negative health cycles, we can get ourselves into positive health cycles. And a lot of times it's just that first thing that needs to get changed and then other things will start falling into place. So if you're getting a good night's sleep, you're well rested and you can make good decisions about food because you're not stressed out and grabbing um, junk food and whatever's convenient. And ooh, now that you have some good nutrition, you have the energy and uh, aptitude to get a good workout in. Oh man, you exercise, you feel great, and now you're tired enough to actually get a good night's sleep and the cycle repeats itself. So could this be your first domino? And if it's not, what is your first domino? Like I said, invest in yourself because you're worth it. Dr. Ludlow's coming up next. He's our urologist on staff at Han Hospital and uh, he's gonna be talking about exclusively men. <laughs>